What's going on guys? Do me a giant favor before we get into this video to get featured in the next one. Just comment chain in the comment section. That's all you have to do. I'm gonna give you guys the top five best loadouts in Warzone right now. And this is gonna be absolutely insane. With everything that's changed recently, I know you guys are gonna love this. And we're gonna start out with the absolute meta gun right now. That is the Cronin Squall. And this thing is insane. Now, I wanna first show you the HR 6.8 barrel. Put the recoil steadiness to 0.39 pounds and the damage range at 0.40 inches. The pros are damage range, bullet velocity, recoil control, and hip fire accuracy. The downside is you do lose some aim down sight speed, hip recoil control, and movement speed. Not a big deal. Move on to the second tread 40 for recoil stabilization at 0.41 ounces, gun kick control at 0.25 inches, and guess what? The pros are vertical and horizontal recoil control increase. The downside is you do lose some aim down sight speed and aiming stability, but that's not a big deal. Put on the demo IMP44 grip. Now, set the recoil stabilization to 0.52 ounces and the aiming out of stability at 0.35 inches. This helps with aiming out of stability, hip fire accuracy, and recoil stabilization. At the cost of some aim down sight speed and walking speed, trust me, you want this one. I also put on the 50 round mag. I mean, if you want the 30, feel free, but I like the 50 way more. Plus, I mean, it's an AR. You got to work your magic. You got to have as many bullets as possible. Last but not least, the Aimot V4. Now, this is completely controversial because, I mean, some people like to use that uh, basically thermal sight. You can definitely rock with this thermal sight. If you want to use this instead, feel free because it'll definitely do damage as well. But I like the Aimot V4, and this is the outcome. Check this thing out. It's absolutely insane. So what we do is we do a little snake and no recoil, no recoil long range no recoil this is probably one of the most dangerous guns they've actually put in warzone 2 just because of how fast it actually gets the job done i think it actually destroys faster than any of the previous metas i'm actually kind of shocked now as a little bonus i want to actually give you guys the perfect secondary trust me this is the one you want to have so it's actually an f tech siege but i made it the mp9 now the mp9 is insane with this but i do want to give you guys a little bit more so instead of the Ratchet B, completely your preference if you want to use this, use the Super Tac VI, set the weight to 32, set the damage to 14, and this thing is incredible. The damage range increase, bullet velocity increase, recoil control, hip fire accuracy at the cost of some aim down sight speed, hip recoil control, movement speed, not a big deal. Put on the 9mm overpressured. One is going to make your enemies flinch more, but the biggest thing I wanted to actually include was the increase of bullet velocity. Now, I increased the bullet velocity at 4.65 GR. Perfect. Now, anything else doesn't really need to be changed. If you want to, it's completely up to you. Put on the 50-round drum, the SUR 160 for the rear grip. This first sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed to cost some recoil control. I set the sprint to fire speed to negative 0.32 inches and the aim down sight speed to negative 0.52 ounces. I put on the FTAC folder for crouch movement speed, recoil control, sprint speed, and aiming stability at the cost of aim walking speed and sprint to fire speed. Now the aiming out of stability is at 1.70 inches and I did not change the weight. I'll just show you guys how amazing this gun is. It's something in all distances. So short, medium, and then long range is the only challenge. You have to make sure your shots are on point, but it's just amazing. Just chef's kiss, man. Amazing. Now we're gonna move on to the ISO Henlock and we're moving on to this because I believe this is still the best beginner friendly weapon. Very easy to use, in my opinion, anybody can use it. It's still meta and still incredible. So I put on the Fielder T50, the damage range, bullet velocity, hip fire accuracy, and recoil control at the cost of some aim down sight speed, hip recoil control and movement speed. Now the recoil steadiness is set to 0.15 pounds and the damage range is set to 0.17 inches. Put on the Harbinger D20, set the recoil smoothness to 0.54 ounces and the bullet velocity at 0.87 inches. It helps with sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness at the cost of aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and aim walking speed. Put on high velocity. I put the damage range at 0.20 Gs and the bullet velocity of 5.23 GR. This helps with bullet velocity and at the cost of damage range, which I fixed with the weight. Put on 45 round mag and the aim op V4. Set the uh, eye position to far. Precision sight picture helps with the decrease of aim down sight speed. Do not change the weight. And this is the outcome. This thing is still incredible in my opinion. Still probably one of the best ARs in the game. And it doesn't even bounce that much. Like, it's so easy to use. And it's such an incredible weapon. Now, I'm surprised that people have been using the Cronin's Ball to a degree. Just because it's still incredibly easy to use. This. Like, even though the Cronin's Ball is the meta, this is just super easy to use. So, in my opinion, you can use either or. Completely up to you. 
Next, we're going to move on to the Vaznev. Even though the Vaznev got a little nerfed, this is still the best build. Put on the Kaz 1 381mm for damage range, hip fire accuracy, and bullet velocity. Set the recoil steadiness to 0.34 pounds and the damage range of 0.15 inches. Put on, now you don't need to use the Spiral 3.5 flash hider if you don't want to. Completely up to you if you want to. In my opinion, which you'd probably be better off using, is something that actually helps with the damage range and bullet velocity, like the X10RR40. You don't want to use that i mean maybe the sa la, 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 i don't really know how to say this but between these two it's completely up to you whichever one you want to use but i will give you the same tuning because the same the tuning isn't really different for either of these in fact this has more cons this basically doesn't have as many cons so completely up to you whichever one you use we're gonna use x10 rr40 so you set the bullet velocity to about 0.44 and you can change the recoil smoothness, but the downside is, as you guys see, the handling is going to go down. So it's completely up to you, whichever preference you want. If you want to have more, you know, handling, then you can increase that. Or you can just leave this alone. You can just have a happy medium, and honestly, it'll be fine. So, also, we're going to put on the 45 round mag, the true tack grip for sprint to fire speed and aim down side speed that costs some recoil control. Put the sprint to fire speed to negative 0.15 inches and a recoil steadiness of 0.58 ounces. And then put on the broadside FCT for aiming stability, crouch movement speed, aim down sight speed, and sprint speed. Now you lose some aim walking speed and recoil control, but set the aiming out stability at 0.70 inches and the aim down sight speed basically maxed out to the bottom. I put it to negative 3.87 ounces. And this is the outcome. This thing is super easy to use and actually amazing in Warzone 2. As you guys see, there is a tiny bit of recoil, so long range you're going to have to be careful, but it still is incredibly easy to use. Next, we're moving on to the TAC-56, and now I know what you guys are going to say. This build does not have an optic. You can use an optic if you want to. I, for one, do not need an optic, but I will give you a version with an optic. So, this is 17.5 Tundra Pro Barrel. That the recoil stain is 0.35 pounds, and the damage range of 0.21 inches. It's also damage range, hip fire accuracy, and bullet velocity at the cost of aim down sight speed and hip recoil control. But on the Harbinger D20... Set the recoil smoothness at 0.54 ounces and the bullet velocity at 0.81 inches. Helps with sound suppression, bullet velocity, damage range, and recoil smoothness at the cost of aim down sight speed, aiming stability, and aim walking speed. Put on the 5.56 high velocity, and this helps with the bullet velocity at the cost of damage range. Now, I set the damage range at 0.61 Gs, and the bullet velocity is maxed out. Put on 60 round mag, but you don't need 60. You can put on 40 if you want less. Put on the FSS combat grip for recoil control at the cost of aiming stability. Set the aiming out stability at 0.35 inches and the recoil steadiness to 0.55 ounces. Here's the outcome and I honestly think that you don't need a sight for this. Now I think that the iron sight is more than enough but some people can't handle the iron sight and you think that you need well an optic. Completely up to you but as you guys see it's super easy to use this. Doesn't take much effort. It has very little recoil like it's not really a challenge. Now if you guys can't handle this no problem. Just take this off and you can put on the aim out before if you don't want to use aim out before then you can honestly use where is it you can use the sz hollow therm either one completely up to you but in this case we're just going to throw on the aim out before at the far distance and here is the optic version now in my opinion you can use either both are easy to use, but I prefer an iron sight. Now, the last thing I want to show you guys, a lot of people have told me to give up on the Fennec, but the Fennec is amazing. It's still meta to this day. Even though people are using the MP5 more, I think the Fennec is still stronger. So, I put on the ZLR 16.5 ignition barrel for damage range, bullet velocity, hip fire accuracy, and recoil control at the cost of aim down sight speed, hip recoil control, and movement speed. Set the recoil control to 0.50 pounds and the damage range to 0.25 inches. Put on the VLK Laser 7MW. Now, you don't have to tune this if you don't want to. If you want some more sprint to fire speed, feel free. If you want some more aim down sight speed, feel free. It's going to actually be incredible. Next, I put on the Fennec Mag 45. You might as well not use anything else. Fennec Rubber Mag for sprint to fire speed and aim down sight speed at the cost of some recoil control. I increased the recoil steadiness at 0.42 ounces. And then I put on the Agile Assault 7 stock for sprint speed, aim walking speed, crouch movement speed, and aim down sight speed at the cost of aiming stability and recoil control. I set the aiming out stability to 2.40 inches while maxed out and aim down sight speed to negative 2.06 ounces. Like I said, as much as people try to write this thing off, I think I still think it's incredible. As you guys see, it still absolutely melts short to medium range. Now, long range is a little bit tougher, but I will show you guys long range. All you guys have to do for the most part is burst fire, but short, medium, still perfect. So please, please try this gun out. It's just so amazing. And just as an added bonus, if you guys aren't happy with that build, here's the MP5 build that I actually regularly use, BLK Laser 7MW. 
set the sprint fire speed to negative 0.23 ounces. I did not change the zeroing distance. I put on the LM stockless mod for aim down sight speed, sprint to fire speed, movement speed, hit recoil control at the cost of aiming recoil control, aiming stability, and flinch resistance. Put on a 40 round mag. Put on the 9mm overpressured for target flinch and set the bullet velocity of 4.94 GR. Damage range of 0.45 G. And then I put on the Merc 4 grip for hip fire accuracy, recoil steadiness, hip recoil control, and aim walking steadiness. At the cost of aim at the cost of hip walking speed and aim down sight speed, I set the aim down sight speed to negative 0.28 inches and the hip walking speed point negative 54 ounces. Here's the outcome. I think it is a strong competitor for the Fennec. But in my opinion, I still like the Fennec more. You guys can use whichever one you guys want to. These guys both do incredible damage. So let me know in the comment section which one you guys want to use.